Hello. Today we're working on the Doswork M48 AVLB, which I have no idea what that stands for, bridge layer. Uh, looking to take a break and do something a little easier, quicker build. Um, so I thought I'd start on this one. May not go as quick as I thought, but anyway. And I was looking on YouTube and I didn't see any builds for this. So I figured, man, eh, let me shoot a few different things. I've already started some of it, but I'm getting into some interesting slash challenging things. So I'm, I'm hoping um, provide some information for somebody else, anybody else looking to build this or considering building this, if it's something they want to get into or not. One thing I was noticing is that there were a few reviews for both this kit and then the Dragon M48 AVLB that I think came out several years ago. And based on those reviews, this looks to be the exact same kit down to the instruction layout. And even the sprues look pretty much the same. So this looks like a, a recast of that uh, that kit. Um, this is December 2022 to give you a time frame for it. So, and taking things a little bit out of order. Instructions have you build the tank portion first. But I've done enough tanks. Uh, I want to do the bridge first. That's the most interesting part. So that's what I started with. And so here's some of the pieces for the instructions. We're in number 20. I've already done this section, identified by this one. You need two of these and I've only built one of those. And I moved on to build 21, which I started working on, and that's where I started running into some interesting things. I go, well, maybe I should video it. Why not? We'll see. I make no promises that this is going to be a full build. So anyway, some things I want to share with you. Um, the molding is pretty clean, crisp. I've, this is actually, I don't think I've ever done a dragon kit before. So I've always wanted to try one out, see how it was. Um, pieces look really good. Um, not any flash that I've seen goes together pretty well. Accuracy, eh, I'll show you that in a minute. So these bridge pieces come on two very large sprues, very thick, very thick. So I'm cutting them off in two steps using some Tamaya nippers to just get them off the sprue, but not too close to the piece. And then I'm uh, getting the nubs off with God hand pliers so we can get it off with pretty much uh, minimal to no cleanup, as well as no bruising of the plastic. I'm not sure I'm going to paint this or not. So I don't paint many of my models, but this one I don't think comes in gray, so I might have to do that. And then I don't know if this is Dragon's logo, but I noticed that was on there as well. So I have to look that up. So I'm thinking, yeah, this is a dragon sprue. So anyway, um, these are made up of um, several different pieces that go together pretty well. Um, but they've got a little bit of cleanup to do on them. So this is the one with most of the nubs clipped off. Looks like uh, I forgot to clip off these two. And that's where the god hands come in. Just do a nice little flush clip. See if I can do that on camera. You guys know all about that. But then you've got these, God, I don't even know what they are these tabs on here that have to come off and they, they are honking, they are pretty big. And then when they come off, they leave some indents and then there are some pretty significant in ejector pin marks on it. So, where's my pointer? I think you can see 
those here, here, here. Now some are recessed and some are protruding. So I've actually shaved down the ones that are protruding. And again, this was supposed to be a, bit, a quick build. I wasn't even gonna go through this, but I don't know, I'm just starting to get a little anal now. Uh, mostly I just don't want the round to stick out. I've already gouged it. I'm not gonna really worry about that. Because again, a lot of that's covered, well, sort of hidden. Like this one was done, all I did was shave it down and I didn't fill it. And because of, since it's on the underside, not gonna worry about it too much, at least this one. Then as I went along, I figured I'd give it a shot at puttying it, because I wanted to see if I could put the putty in there without uh, a whole lot of uh, excess. It didn't come out and minimize sanding, but that didn't work out so well. So these are kind of in three different st stages. This is came off the sprue. Still have to clean it up. This one, I have shaved them down, but I haven't filled them yet. And then this one, I've shaved and filled them. And this is the best I'm gonna do because it's again on the underside. Um, let's see. So that's about it. So I figured I'd try uh, show some of the stuff on camera. Don't always do this, but show you what works or what probably doesn't work. I want to give it a shot in trying to fill some of these. And try and scrape away as much excess as I can to minimize the sanding. Here's an Atamaya gray putty. Boom. Um, and I already sanded this one. I used 100 grit. And actually on this one, all I did was just take a st old standard emery board, filed it down, and I figured if I paint it, the paint will hide most of that. So that's why I didn't worry too much about it. So then I wanna give this a shot. I wanted to try something else in that I like Let's get some, yeah, that's working. I like using chisels. I wanted to see if this might do a little bit better. We got that good. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I can live with that. See, I'm looking to get get up all that excess before I have to sand it off. The problem is, see, it picks it up. So if you scrape it too hard, it just digs it all out. So I don't think I'm gonna get away with that. So we will just deal with sanding it. Fortunately, it sands up pretty easy. Well, since it sanded up easy, I'll go with that. What I also found out is it sticks better if it's fresh out of the tube. So I gouged this up pretty good. go with a slightly wider chisel, probably less pressure. Yeah, yeah it's not so great, but I'll work with it. Again, this is the underside. So You could weather it. All right, I'll live with that. I've tried different types of uh, spatulas. I think probably on my second one. Well, this would be. 
This is probably about the flattest one I have. So you can fill it really well if you make a mess, which I was trying to avoid because I really hate sanding. But it is what it is. So you can determine if this is going to work for you or not. That one. Sorry, I don't video much and I have a tendency to do things off camera. All right, that's pretty thick, but I'm gonna live with it. I'll just have to sand. that dry and move on to something else all right just to give you an idea of what I was doing here again I don't know if you can see it it in the light. This one is raised. That one's raised. That one's recessed. Mostly recessed. Recessed. And then these are just monsters. So I just, I've tried, let's try here. I'll show you. Still use it. So about the same as yeah, actually that was better clipping it. That one's really raised. So if you're thinking of doing it, this actually glued up pretty quick. Probably took about five minutes just to glue it up once the pieces were cleaned up. So getting them off the sprue, getting rid of the nubs, that was probably five or 10 minutes. So I'm spending more time getting rid of the um, ejector pin marks and sanding it. That's taking me anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes each. So just assembly itself goes real quick. So. So one thing about the kit, it goes together pretty quick. So the other thing is, we won't do all of them, but I'll show you what I'm doing. Hopefully I don't slice my finger off. So where we've got the nubs, just shaving them off. I mean, I could sand it off, or I've used this. This has a tendency tendency to gouge it. That's where the big gouges came on. This one. So this does the job. That one's raised. And again, I'm not really too worried about 
be good scarred. I'll fill it with some putty. Not to try not to go too deep, but sometimes it just doesn't work. I kept going deeper than I should there. All those are recessed. Let's clean up these. She hadn't even planned to go to this level of detail. Goal was just to slap it together, but couldn't help myself. Also, I normally go slower, trying to be a little bit more careful, but I just make that video go on and on and on. Then what I also tend to do is knock it down a little bit. Like that. You can feel it, probably even see it, but a little bit of paint and since the circle's gone, just be a scarring in the metal, that's all. A foundry mark. Right, so that's basically it. So um, I'll clean this one up later a little bit more. I'll putty it like this one. Sand them both. And then do the build. All right. So the one thing I wanted to do was This one together. Hopefully this is right. It should be at yeah. 21. Good piece matches. Got this edge here, matches here. So one reason not to worry too much about the ejector pin marks is this really isn't accurate. So you've got these supports, which I think are just to help build the model, which it does make it very easy to go together, but I don't think it's very accurate. I don't know what that's supposed to be. And then these pieces are supposed to be cross bracing that looks like this and not solid based on a few different photos I've seen. So based on this photo, you can see the cross bracing is not solid, all right? You've got more bracing here. I mean, this could be a different version of the brace. It looks pretty close though. It 
And then these plates seem to be either reinforced or more substantial or, or wider. So again, accuracy, eh, I don't know. But since it's gonna be this way, it really doesn't matter too much. Point being those, I don't know if there's even a point in filling all these if you're going for accuracy. Anyway, I'm not worried too much about that. So what we have to do now are find the correct pieces. Put this one together. So you need this piece. And I believe I've already trimmed them. You need this piece, which is G6. And I've written on most of these because a lot of them look alike. I need G1. I need K4. I wrote, uh -huh. Camera may not pick it up, but I wrote in pencil there, K4. Which I got them backwards because this should be K4 because K3 has a notch in it. And it goes like that. G14. And then G5. So I'm laying those out in order of putting them in from that order. So we have to get that piece, which is a K2. Now there is a difference. So you can see this notch is deeper than that notch. And then this is the mirror of it, I guess you could say. So you just have to make sure you get the right one. And when you test fit them, you'll see. So K2 goes here. And that means it will be flush on this side. And, oh yeah, the, the side piece runs up here, butts up to here, and then runs into there. So that's, this piece runs along this groove, and then it butts up. To here. So and then this piece rides like this. And the one thing I found out, actually it's the other side. Two things to keep in mind. When you do this one, so this notch lines up there. When you do this piece, you want to make sure you see how they don't want to stay by themselves. You want to make sure it lines up flush, not inset and not outset so that it lines up flush. There we go. So I'll show you a trick for that. So on this one, it's this piece here. So I don't know if there's a seam in the real world, so, but if anything, at least it's flush, okay? So that, and then when you put these two pieces on, these all slide down. So they're real easy to get in. This one does not slide in. So you have to get this in before these two set up. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And this one I believe will drop in, but I generally, I put this one in same time I glued these in. And when I did all of these, I used the Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Setting and I tacked it 
here, I tacked it here, and I tacked it here just enough to hold it in um, so I could work it. And then I came back with it later and then did some heavy gluing in there. So that was like having a third hand. I want to do it a little differently because this is good stuff, but I like using something like this or the old stuff, which you can't get anymore. That and the same stuff. I like this stuff. To me, it, you can put it on thicker, get a better bond, a better weld. It takes a little bit longer though. So we're gonna have to figure out a way how I get that on there and tack it into place. I'll probably use a combination of both of these. But again, hopefully that only takes me five minutes like it did last time. Yeah, five, 10 minutes, something like that. All right. So what we're gonna do is use this one. Get it started. Problem with this stuff is once it goes, it starts flowing real fast. Oh, see, it's already going. All right, but it does take a while to dry. So, where are we, where are we at? And then if we just put it on the inside corner. One thing about this is it flows pretty damn quick. I might say a little too quick. And while I'm here, where the spot welding helps. As this glue doesn't really. And then the other thing is there's a lip on this side. So if you want it flush, you have to um, So good, they're staying. So what we need to do now is get this puppy in there. Actually, what I should have done was sanded that down to make sure it was flat. I did that to the other piece. But and now that I'm doing it this way, I kind of like the other one with the extra thin, but we're already, we are already 
here. So again, we want to make sure we're flush here. All right. That we're seated well. I am really not. And this should be. with that. That is way too low. All right. Anyway. <clears throat> so far, this is working. And it's interesting, this one, this one is definitely notched. So yeah, there's no getting it in later. This one does not have that problem. You can slide it in. Just be careful when you do. Because portion with a hole goes up. Hmm. All right. So. Flowing, but not too fast. And then, based on what I can tell, this piece goes on this side. Could be wrong. Well, I can't even. All So this one has pretty long set time. All right. I really can't tell if it's supposed to go one way or the other, but I'm putting, trying to make it so the, where I numbered it with pencil is least visible as possible. And one plate with a notch in it goes where this notch is. So the good news is with these internal braces, I don't believe are accurate, but it sure makes it easier to build. So I'm not going to pitch it back. So the glue gets pushed down and also gets pushed down on the on the bottom part. So it helps lock it into place. All right. So now we have to get it all. I mean, that's basically it. So now what we have to do though is make sure that we're seated well. 
We're flush as much as possible. And then like I can feel like that. Make sure we're flush here so we can sit level. So the one thing that doesn't match up is if you see this one, this crossbar piece sits higher than this one. So I don't know if that's bent, if I glued it incorrectly. I don't know, but right now it's flexible. So once I figure out what it's supposed to be, then we'll, if we need to, we can raise it up and then glue it in place. So if need be. So that's not the end of the world. I have a feeling the piece is bent. So we can adjust that later. So now what we'll do is lock it in place with some of the quick setting cement. For example, I can see that you got some flex there. This one. The one thing I would say is if you're a chemist, I don't know if mixing this and this is bad. Fume wise. So I would caution on that, but I'm old and I'm not gonna live forever, so. Because this vapor wise is some strong stuff. Good news is though, is it works fast. Very, very fast. So it wicks in there. sets up pretty quickly. I don't know if I call it instant welding, but it's pretty quick. Maybe I just should switch to this. like to do is let it seep in and then push them together. I don't know if you could see that, but you can actually see the, the weld happening there. Yeah, the lighting's probably not good enough, but that stuff works quick and good.
So I have to make two more of these, one each. So I think the next two will just use this because I only use this, or mostly on this one, I and mean, it just went together so much quicker and easier, and less stinky. Although this stuff is pretty potent. So use it in a well-ventilated area or it'll eat your brain. You also want to be careful too much because what I've had is if you put it in there, put it in, in a crack and it seeps through and it seeps down because it's too much, it'll run down, hit your finger, and then you'll leave fingerprints on your model. So I'm sure you're, some of your old timers already know about that, but because this stuff runs, this is like water. Consistency of. It's definitely a whole lot more toxic than water. But it sure does a good job at instantly welding. Plastic. Styrene. So this is the first year I've actually started using this quick setting extra thin cement out of my decades in model building. So I'm just getting used to it. It does make model building go a whole lot faster though. Because it's pretty much set up within 30 to 60 seconds. And then you have a really good bond after about two minutes, so you can move fast. Flows well. Doesn't leave much of a hint. Whereas if you overfill with this, it leaves a shiny hue, so you can see where it is. So you then you really have to paint if you use too much of it. All right, wow, 43 minutes. All right, so we're gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna do the other two off camera. And then we'll see where that takes us. So I hope that was either interesting, helpful, or something else. You know, we'll have to figure that one out. Sucker should not be rocking. Anyway, all right, thanks for watching.